The story begins one night where a boy battered sits against a wall. He's been through a lot and is feeling defeated. Just when he thinks things can't get any worse, a glowing blonde man with boxing gloves on his shoulder walks by and stops to give the boy some encouraging words. The man introduces himself as Kay, a renowned boxing trainer, and tells the boy to come see him at the gym the next day. The next day at the gym, the gym director talks to Kay about the young boy he met the previous evening. The director tells Kay that the boy had been effortlessly sparring with one of their best boxers. Intrigued, Kay asks the gym director to bring in the strongest boxer to spar with the young boy, who turns out to be Ryu. When called to the ring, Ryu demonstrates his excellent fighting skills against Steel, but ultimately gets hit due to his lack of boxing experience. After the sparring match, the gym director asks Kay for his thoughts on Ryu's potential as a champion boxer. Kay confirms that Ryu has the talent and determination to become a champion. He can see the fire in Ryu's eyes and knows that he has what it takes to go all the way. Kay offers to train Ryu himself, seeing great potential in the young fighter. As Kay and the gym director continue to talk, Kay's attention is suddenly drawn to a disturbance outside the gym. He sees a boy with a blank expression about to be hit by a group of bullies. Kay quickly springs into action and intervenes, using his boxing skills to defend the boy and send the bullies running. The boy, grateful for Kay's help, introduces himself as Ken and asks if he can train at the gym as well. Kay agrees and the two become fast friends, training together and pushing each other to be their best. Under Kay's guidance, both Ryu and Ken go on to become successful and respected boxers, known for their skilled techniques and unrelenting determination. Kay stood at the edge of the boxing ring, watching in fascination as the boy down below took punch after punch from a group of bullies. Kay knew he had to do something, so he made his way down to the ring and approached the boy. Hey, are you okay? Kay asked, trying to catch the boy's attention. But the boy didn't seem to care about the punches he was taking. He just stood there, taking the hits and not even flinching. Kay was shocked by the boy's calm demeanor and decided to test his skills. He threw a punch at the boy, hoping to catch him off guard. But to Kay's surprise, the boy easily dodged the blow. Kay knew he had just witnessed something special. He approached the boy and asked him if he wanted to learn how to box. The boy simply looked at Kay and asked, is hitting people fun? Kay chuckled and replied, of course it's fun. It's human nature to want to fight and be the best. That's what being alive is all about. Kay then showed the boy a simple one-two combo and told him to come back to the gym in a month. As the boy walked off silently, Kay couldn't help but feel intrigued by him. He had a feeling that this kid had something special, something that set him apart from the rest. The next day at school, Kay saw the boy sitting by himself, looking lost in thought. Meanwhile, the bullies were hanging out with Ryu, discussing plans to meet some girls. Ryu mentioned that he had to go to the boxing gym, and one of the bullies wondered why he needed to go. There are always bigger things for people like Ryu, another bully replied matter-of-factly. One day, he'll become world champion. Kay couldn't help but smile at the thought. He had a feeling that the boy he had met at the gym had the potential to be something great. He just had to find the right motivation and drive to succeed. At school, the bullies are causing trouble as usual, and one day they end up getting the black-haired kid, named Yu, in trouble too. In an act of retribution, they slap him in front of everyone before whisking Ani off to have lunch with them. As they all sit down to eat, they notice that Ani has brought cup noodles from home, just like they all have. However, the bullies decide to play a mean trick on Ani and secretly put a bug in his noodles, laughing to themselves as they watch him struggle to eat. What's the matter, Inyi? Can't handle a little bug in your food. One of the bullies, Ryu, taunts. Seeing the disgust on Inyi's face, the other bullies chime in and exclaim that it's probably because he doesn't have enough toppings on his noodles. They then proceed to add their own toppings to Inyi's noodles, including phlegmy spit and a lollipop. As Inyi looks on in horror, Ryu viciously asks if it's not enough before they force him to eat it all. After the cruel prank, Inyi is left feeling sick and humiliated. He makes his way to the drinking fountains and gags before vomiting into one of them. The other students give him a wide berth, not wanting to get involved in the bullying. In PE class, the boys are playing football while Ani and Yu sit out. Ani can't help but feel a sense of sadness and frustration as he watches his classmates play. He turns to Yu and asks him why he isn't playing despite being good at sports. Yu replies that he finds it boring and doesn't see the point in putting in all that effort just to win. Ani nods in agreement and asks Yu if there's anything he wants to become. Yu briefly remembers something that someone named Kay told him but he dismisses the thought and says it doesn't matter. Returning the question, Ini tells you that he wants to become like his dad, a professional boxer. Yu looks on with interest as Ini talks about his dream, and Ini can't help but feel a sense of hope and excitement. He invites Yu over to his house to play a new boxing game he just bought, hoping to make a new friend. 
However, their conversation is interrupted when Ryu vindictively kicks the ball at Ini. Yu, who has been watching the ball with a bored expression, suddenly springs into action and catches it in midair. Ryu is infuriated by Yu's apathetic attitude and storms over to him, violently slapping him before vehemently threatening him. Ini can only watch in shock and fear as the bully towers over Yu, his face twisted with anger. When school ends, Ini heads off home, still feeling shaken by the events of the day. Yu also heads home, his face expressionless as usual. When Ini gets home, he begins practicing his boxing moves in his room, thinking about how he can't let other people get involved in his fights. He remembers telling Yu that he wanted to be his friend and feels a sense of determination wash over him. However, he can't shake the image of Ryu's threatening aura from his mind, and he dejectedly calls himself a loser before collapsing onto his bed. In the evening, Ini sits on the edge of his bed, trying to psych himself up for the challenges ahead. He knows that he can't go on living like this, constantly feeling afraid and powerless. But he is also aware of the harsh reality of Ryu Beeksen and his immense strength. And he can't help but wonder if you will ever be able to stand up to him and put an end to the torment he and his friends have been suffering. As he contemplates his options, Inyi hears his father come home and decides to ask him for advice. His father, a former pro boxer, always has wise words to share. Inyi gathers his courage and approaches his father, asking him what he did when he had to fight against someone who was much stronger than him. Thinking for a moment, his father explains that as a boxer, he had to do his best and do what he could to win. He tells Inyi that even if you get knocked down, as long as you can still get back up, you should do so because the moment a boxer stays down, their career is over. He emphasizes that true courage, both in boxers and non-boxers, is commendable and something to be admired. Grateful for his father's wisdom, Inyi thanks him and heads off to bed, feeling a little more hopeful and determined. Meanwhile, despite the fact that school has been over for hours, Yu is finally returning home where Ryu is waiting for him. As Yu walks past, he completely ignores Ryu, which prompts Ryu to kick him to the ground and try to intimidate him. Despite Ryu's threats and taunts, Yu remains silent, causing Ryu to become even more irate and slam his head into the ground, demanding that he speak. When Yu still doesn't respond, Ryu spits on him and walks away, feeling frustrated and humiliated by Yu's lack of fear. As Ryu stalks off, he is accosted by a random student who wonders if he is strong. Delighted at the opportunity to prove himself, Ryu immediately knocks the student out and then proceeds to beat up his companions. As he tortures the last one, Ryu relishes the fear and pain he has become accustomed to seeing on their faces. He revels in the power and control he has over these weaker individuals, feeling a sense of satisfaction and superiority. But as the night wears on, Ryu's actions begin to weigh on him. He can't help but feel a sense of emptiness and loneliness, despite all the fear, and respect he has garnered from his peers. He starts to wonder if this is all there is to life, constantly fighting and causing pain to others. At the same time, Ini lies awake in bed, still thinking about his father's words and how he can apply them to his own situation. He knows that he can't just sit back and let Ryu continue to terrorize him and his friends. He resolves to do whatever it takes to stand up to Ryu and put an end to the cycle of violence and intimidation. As for Yu, he sits silently with his sleeping cat in his lap his eyes dead and empty. He has become numb to the constant fear and abuse he has endured, not knowing how to escape from the darkness that surrounds him. The next morning, Ini wakes up feeling refreshed and ready to tackle the day ahead. He begins his daily routine by washing his face, taking a moment to splash some cold water on his face and wake himself up. After drying off, he heads to the kitchen to make breakfast. He takes a little extra time to cook a filling meal, knowing that it will give him the energy he needs to make it through the school day. Once he has finished eating, Inni heads to his room to get dressed for school. As he puts on his uniform and gathers his books, he makes a conscious effort to start the day with a positive attitude. He knows that it will be a challenge, as he is often targeted by bullies at school, but he is determined to face the day with courage and determination. As Inyi makes his way to school, he can't help but feel a sense of nervousness. He knows that the bullies will likely be waiting for him, and he braces himself for the confrontation. However, when he arrives at class and takes his seat, the bullies walk past him without incident, leaving him confused and relieved. It isn't until later that he realizes that Yu, one of his classmates who is often targeted along with him, was late and was not present to be bullied. As the school day goes on, Inyi can't shake the feeling that something is off. Despite being left alone by the bullies, he can't shake the feeling that they are up to something. His suspicions are confirmed when he overhears them talking about their plans to target you after school. Determined to stand up for his classmate, Inyi follows the bullies to the PE equipment room after the final bell has rung. When he arrives, he finds the bullies roughing up a seemingly emotionless and apathetic Yu, with Ryu, the leader of the group, observing and making comments. Inyi's heart races as he watches the scene unfold, knowing that he has to do something to stop it. With a burst of courage, Inyi steps forward and tells the bullies to stop. 
They are caught off guard by his sudden appearance and for a moment they hesitate. Minnie takes this opportunity to adopt a boxing stance, recalling the moves his father had taught him in case he ever found himself in a situation like this. One of the bullies approaches confidently, but Inyi strikes him with a solid one-two punch, stunning the bully and drawing blood. As the tables turn and Inyi grows in confidence, Ryu steps forward and mockingly notes that Inyi has learned some boxing. Leaning in, Ryu derisively challenges Inyi to see what he is made of. Inyi stands his ground, determined to protect his classmate and stand up for himself. He knows that it will be a difficult fight, but he is ready to face it head on. With his target right in front of him, Inyi takes a deep breath and reminds himself of his game plan. He had spent countless hours training and preparing for this moment, and he was determined to come out on top. He remembers the words of his father, who had always told him to never give up no matter how difficult the situation may seem. With that in mind, Inyi charges forward and begins firing off a series of punches at Ryu. But to his dismay, Ryu effortlessly evades every single strike. Inyi can't help but feel frustrated and defeated as he watches Ryu mockingly tell him how he should attack. And just as he thought things couldn't get any worse, Ryu bops Inyi in the nose, causing him to stumble backwards in shock. Feeling humiliated and determined to prove himself, Inyi frantically throws a punch, hoping to catch Ryu off guard. But Ryu is too quick and easily dodges the attack, countering with a vicious punch that knocks Inyi's glasses off his face and drops him to his knees. As Inyi sits there, dazed and disoriented, he can see the clear difference between their abilities and hears Ryu taunting him, telling him that he's not good enough. But Inyi refuses to give up. He remembers his father's words and returns to his feet with a renewed sense of determination. He knows that he can't let Ryu's words get to him and he has to focus on the task at hand. Gladdened by Inyi's spirit, Ryu puts one arm behind his back and declares that it's now time for round two. Inyi takes a moment to compose himself and then nods, ready to take on Ryu once again. This time, he's not going to let Ryu get the upper hand. But unfortunately, Ryu hits first with a punch to the face, causing Inyi to focus on protecting his face from all of Ryu's subsequent blows. Inyi tries to fight back, but Ryu is just too skilled and manages to crack Inyi in the stomach with a solid punch, sending him reeling and leaving a grin of sheer ecstasy on Ryu's face. Feeling defeated and with no other options left, Inyi curls up completely in an effort to protect all sides of his body from Ryu's onslaught of punches. He knows he has to wait for his chance to counter and he's determined to make it count. He waits patiently, enduring the pain and trying to conserve his energy. And finally, after what feels like an eternity, Inyi sees his chance and puts all his remaining energy into an uppercut. But Ryu is ready for it and happily dodges the whiffing punch, counterattacking with a devastating overhand left that knocks Inyi out. As Inyi lies on the ground, defeated and bruised, he can't help but think about his father and all the hard work he had put into this moment. He knows he still has a long way to go, but he also knows that he can't give up. He will keep training and fighting until he reaches the top, just like his father had always told him. So, he gets back up and looks forward to the next round, knowing that he has the determination and drive to become the best. As Inyi lay on the ground, his head swimming from the force of the punch, he couldn't help but think about his father's boxing record. He had always respected his dad for the kind of person he was and the dedication he had to his craft. Inyi's father had always instilled in him the importance of never giving up, no matter how difficult the situation seemed. As he struggled to regain his footing, Inyi couldn't help but think about how his father would react if he saw him in this situation. He knew his dad would want him to get back up and keep fighting, no matter how hopeless it seemed. So, despite the pain and the dizziness, Inyi pushed himself off the ground and tried to stand. Ryu, who had been taunting Inyi while he was down, sneered at him as he stood up. You really think you can take me down? He jeered. You're just a weak little kid. You don't stand a chance against me. But Inyi refused to back down. He knew he couldn't win this fight, but he also knew that he couldn't let Ryu walk away thinking he had bested him. So, with a determination born of pure stubbornness, Inyi swung at Ryu with all his might. But Ryu was too quick for him. He easily dodged the punch and countered with a series of quick jabs that left Inyi on the ground again. As Inyi struggled to catch his breath, Ryu stood over him, a satisfied smirk on his face. You're done, he said. I won't bother you anymore. But Inyi wasn't ready to give up yet. Remembering his father's words about what it means to be a true boxer, he gritted his teeth and pushed himself up once again. We're not done yet, he said, his voice determined. I won't give up until you give me a real fight. Ryu looked at him with disgust, but Inyi could see a flicker of hesitation in his eyes. He knew that Ryu was starting to doubt his own victory. So, with a renewed sense of purpose, Inyi stood his ground and waited for Ryu to make his move. The other bullies and Inyi watched as the two boys faced off, each one determined to come out on top. Ryu's anger was palpable as he swung at Inyi, his fists flying with a ferocity that left Inyi reeling. But Inyi refused to give up. 
He took the hits and kept coming back for more, determined to prove to Ryu that he was not a weakling. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Ryu landed a particularly brutal punch that sent an E crashing to the ground once again. As he lay there, struggling to catch his breath, Ryu began pummeling him mercilessly, shouting insults and taunts as he hit him. But an E was dumb listening. As he lay there, bruised and battered, he knew he had achieved his goal. He had stood up to Ryu and proved that he was not afraid. So, with a quiet strength that surprised even himself, Ini spoke up. I knew I couldn't win, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. But I didn't care. I just wanted to show you that I'm not afraid of you. Ryu stopped in mid-punch, his eyes wide with shock. He had never expected Ini to admit defeat, let alone with such a calm acceptance. What do you mean, you didn't care? I didn't care about winning or losing, Ini continued, struggling to speak through the pain. I just wanted to prove to myself that I could stand up for myself. And I did that. So, no matter what you do to me now, I've already won. Ryu stood there for a moment, staring at Inyi in disbelief. Then, with a snarl of anger, he began hitting him again, shouting that Inyi would never be as strong as him no matter how hard he tried. But Inyi didn't care. He had already made his point, and he knew that Ryu's anger was born of fear and insecurity. So, with a peaceful acceptance, Inyi lay there and let Ryu vent his frustration on him. And as the other bullies Inyi watched in horror, they couldn't help but wonder if they had been wrong all along. Maybe Inyi was right, maybe strength didn't come from winning or losing but from standing up for what you believed in. Suddenly, from behind them all, you spoke up. Is this really fun for you guys? He asked, his voice laced with disgust. Is it really worth it to hit someone just because you can? There was a moment of silence as the other boys looked at each other, unsure of how to respond. Then, slowly, they began to back away, their confidence and bravado melting away in the face of Yu's disapproval. As for Ryu, he looked at Inyi one last time, his face a mix of anger and shame. Then, with a muttered curse, he turned and walked away, leaving Inyi lying on the ground, battered but triumphant. As the other boys scattered, Inyi slowly pushed himself up and looked around. He knew he had a long road ahead of him, a road filled with pain and setbacks. But he also knew that he had taken the first step towards becoming the kind of person his father had always wanted him to be, a true boxer, in every sense of the word. K had encountered and tested Yu for the first time a while back. And during this encounter, he had asked the boxing gym director if he knew who Yu was. The director had not seemed to have an answer, so K had asked him what he thought about instincts. K had explained that whenever he met an athlete that he would eventually end up training. He would always get a gut feeling about it. He had felt this way about Ryu Beeksum, but when he met Yu, he had felt something different. Instead of the usual gut feeling, K had felt a blood-curdling fear wash over him. In the present, the bully who had been punched by an E storm towards Yu, looking for revenge. However, Yu remembered a move that K had shown him during their first encounter and swiftly came into a boxing stance, ready to defend himself. With a quick 1-2 combo, Yu knocked the bully out, leaving everyone watching in shock. Encouraged by this, another bully charged at Yu, but he easily took him out with the same combo. Seeing this, the third bully ran away in fear, while Ryu looked on in disbelief. Flashback to the first encounter with Kay and Yu, Kay had told the gym director that he couldn't stop trembling when he saw Yu. It seemed to Kay as if Yu had been waiting for the punch to land at the time. The gym director had been skeptical, but Kay had insisted that he was telling the truth. Kay had then revealed to the gym director that Yu had easily avoided his definite kill punch, showing off superhuman capabilities that Kay had never seen before. In fact, Kay had never seen anyone like Yu before, not a genius, but a monster that surpassed the capabilities of humans. In the present, Ryu got to his feet and stared Yu down, feeling a strange tension between them. Unnerved by Yu's gaze, Ryu prepared to attack, but was suddenly struck in the right eye by an imperceptible blow. Crumpling to the ground and screaming in pain, Ryu looked up at Yu with fear in his eyes, while Yu looked down at him with apathy. Ryu had always been curious about his own strength, and he finally found out that he was stronger than others when he discovered that dominating others gave him a sense of satisfaction. This realization fueled his desire to fight and he became famous among skilled fighters in the country. Whenever someone challenged him to prove their own superiority, Ryu enjoyed crushing them, which made him feel special. But one day, Ryu was stunned when he was hit by Yu. Despite trying to reassure himself that it was just a mistake, Ryu got back up with anger and prepared to defeat Yu with all his effort. As he circled Yu, Ryu lunged at him with a right hook, but Yu managed to duck and counter with punches to the side and face. Yu then delivered a ruthless beatdown that left Ryu unconscious. When Ryu awoke, he found himself in a hospital bed with bruises and cuts all over his body. It took him a few minutes to realize what had happened, and for the first time in his life, he felt defeat. Overwhelmed with emotion, Ryu cried like a child, having experienced his first loss. As he lay in bed, Ryu couldn't stop thinking about the beating he had received at the hands of Yu. He had always been confident in his own abilities, and he had never encountered someone who could match his strength. 
but Yu had not only matched him, he had completely overpowered him. Ryu couldn't understand how he had been defeated. He had always believed that he was special, that he had something that set him apart from other fighters. But now, he was forced to confront the reality that there were people who were stronger than him, and it was a humbling experience. As he recovered in the hospital, Ryu began to reflect on his past actions and his desire to dominate others. He realized that his obsession with strength and power had blinded him to the true nature of martial arts. He had been focused on winning and defeating others, rather than on honing his skills and seeking self-improvement. Feeling a newfound sense of humility, Ryu vowed to change his ways and to focus on becoming a true martial artist. He knew that it would be a long and difficult journey, but he was determined to follow the path of enlightenment and to become a warrior in the truest sense of the word. As Kay walked into the boxing gym, he couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement and determination wash over him. This was the place where he was going to make a name for himself, where he was going to prove that he was the best. Two people at the gym tried to strike up a conversation with Kay hoping to impress him with their skills and knowledge. But Kay was having none of it. He was focused on finding the right person to train with, someone who could push him to his limits and help him reach his full potential. As Kay scanned the room, he noticed the gym director talking to someone in the corner. He walked over and overheard the director asking about the whereabouts of Ryu Beekson, a formidable opponent who had not been seen at the gym for a while. Just as Kay was about to turn away, he saw the door open and a familiar face walk in. It was Yu, a young man who Kay had met a few times before. Yu seemed surprised to see everyone staring at him, but Kay didn't waste any time. He walked up to Yu and asked him if he was ready to learn how to box professionally. Yu hesitated for a moment before agreeing, but on one condition, that Kay paid for some hospital bills. Kay was taken aback by this request, but he knew there was a story behind it. He asked you if he thought Beekson was a strong fighter, and you simply replied that he wasn't really. Kay nodded, understanding what had happened. He told you to take him to the hospital before thanking the stun gym director. As they walked through the hospital corridors, Kay couldn't help but marvel at how well you had beaten Beekson. He wondered if a person like Beekson would be able to recover from such a crushing defeat. Meanwhile, you looked down at the sleeping Inyi, recalling his unbreakable spirit and determination. He knew that Inyi would never give up, no matter how difficult the situation seemed. After leaving the hospital, you took Kay to his home, a small and sparsely furnished apartment. Kay saw the struggles that you had faced and couldn't help but feel a sense of compassion and admiration for him. As they sat down to talk, Kay asked you for his name. You hesitated for a moment before telling Kay about a part of his dark past, a time when he had lost everything and had to start from scratch. But you was determined to move on, to create a new life for himself. And with Kay's help, he knew he could do it. Kay told you that he was going to show him a whole new world, a place where he could be whoever he wanted to be. And you knew that, with Kay by his side, he could achieve anything. Sometime later, a visibly dulled Ryu Beekson looked out of the hospital window. Then he appeared and the two stared at each other briefly before Beekson turned away in frustration. With fierce courage in his expression, Inyi merely walked past him, ready to face whatever challenges came his way. As Kay stood in front of Yu, ready to take him away to their next destination, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. He couldn't quite put his finger on it, but something just didn't seem right. Kay rummaged through his bag, searching for something that could help him fix the problem. Finally, he pulled out a small container of hair gel. Here we go, he muttered to himself as he began to restyle Yu's hair. Kay had always been particular about appearances, and he wasn't about to let a little thing like unruly hair ruin their trip. After a few minutes of styling, Kay was satisfied with the result. Yu's hair was now perfectly coiffed and under control. Kay grinned at his handiwork and gave Yu's shoulder a pat. There we go, he said. All set to go. The two of them boarded their plane and took off, soaring through the air towards their next destination. As they flew, Kay couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement. He had big plans for Yu, and he was eager to get started. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, they arrived at their destination. Kay and Yu were greeted by Carmen and another of Kay's subordinates as they stepped off the plane. They were then whisked away in a car, driving through the bustling city towards Yu's new residence. As they drove, Kay couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. This was his domain, and he was eager to show it off to you. When they arrived at the gym, Kay practically bounced out of the car, eager to give you the full tour. The Lions Boxing Club was a place that Kay held dear to his heart. It was here that he had trained some of the greatest boxers the world had ever seen, and he was proud to be able to share it with you. As they walked through the gym, Kay introduced you to the trainers and showed him around. As they walked, Kay noticed that you seemed particularly interested in the pictures of the boxers on the wall. Kay grinned, knowing exactly what was on Yu's mind. He walked over to the wall and began to point out each of the champions, telling you the stories of their victories and triumphs. Finally, Kay landed on Aaron Tide, his most recent trainee and current heavyweight champion. 
Kay couldn't help but feel a sense of pride as he talked about Aaron's accomplishments. He had worked hard to get where he was, and Kay knew that he had a bright future ahead of him. And that's why we're going to watch the heavyweight title fight tomorrow, Kay said with a grin. I want you to see what it takes to be a champion. The next day, Kay and Yu sat ringside as they watched Aaron Tide successfully defend his title once again. Kay couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction as he watched his protege triumph. As the fight ended and the crowd erupted into cheers, Kay turned to Yu with a sly grin. See that? He said, that's what it takes to be a champion. And with my guidance, you can be a champion too. I'll make you the king of the world, you. Just wait and see. As Kay spoke, he couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation. The moment he had been waiting for, the moment that would quench his grudge and prove his worth, was finally within reach. All he had to do was guide you to the top, and he knew that he could do it. With a confident smile, Kay leaned back in his seat and watched as the celebrations continued around him. He knew that this was just the beginning, and he was determined to see you reach the heights of success. Over the next few weeks, Kay worked tirelessly to help you reach his full potential. He trained him in the gym, pushing him to be his best. He taught him everything he knew about the sport, sharing his knowledge and experience with you. As Yu's skills grew, so did his confidence. He began to see the potential that Kay had always known was there, and he was determined to make the most of it. Finally, the day of Yu's first big fight arrived. Kay stood ringside, his heart racing with excitement and nerves. As the bell rang and the fighters stepped into the ring, Kay knew that this was it. This was the moment that he had been waiting for, the moment that would prove to the world that he was the greatest trainer of all time. As the fight raged on, Kay watched with a fierce intensity. He shouted out encouragement to Yu, urging him on to victory. And in the end, Yu emerged victorious, becoming the new heavyweight champion. As the crowd erupted into cheers, Kay couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. He had done it. He had made you the king of the world, just as he had promised. And in that moment, Kay knew that there was nothing he couldn't achieve. Josh had always been envious of the preferential treatment that you seemed to receive from Kay, the local boxing coach. Despite putting in countless hours of training and dedication to his craft, Josh always felt like he was being overlooked in favor of you. So, when he saw an opportunity to prove himself, Josh decided to challenge Kay to a boxing match. If I can beat you in the ring, Josh declared, you have to take me on as well. I'm tired of being overlooked and I want to show you what I'm capable of. Kay, intrigued by the challenge, decided to flip the script. If you can even land a single punch on you, he replied, I'll make you a world champion. But be warned, he's not as easy to hit as you might think. As the fight approached, Josh couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and frustration. On one hand, he was finally getting the chance to prove himself and show Kay what he was capable of. But on the other hand, he couldn't shake the feeling that Kay was doubting his abilities and talent. When the day of the fight arrived, Josh watched as Yu was taught how to wrap his hands in the ring. The crowd, which had gathered to watch the bout, took notice of Yu's small and seemingly unathletic frame, but one spectator remarked that one should never underestimate fighters that Kay had personally brought in. Before the fight began, Kay pulled Yu aside and had a few words with him. Remember, he said, for as long as you're in that ring, you can't let yourself get hit. Stay focused and stay on your toes. You nodded, I'll try my best, coach. As the bell rang to signal the start of the first round, Josh came out swinging, determined to land a punch on you and prove K wrong. But no matter how hard he tried, he just couldn't seem to connect. Yu was too fast, too agile, and seemed to effortlessly dodge every single one of Josh's blows. As the rounds went on, Josh began to realize that Kay's words weren't meant to provoke him or doubt his abilities. Rather, they were a revelation of just how talented Yu truly was. Defeated and exhausted, Josh eventually threw in the towel, knowing that he just wasn't in the same league as Yu. As he left the ring, Josh couldn't help but feel a sense of disappointment and frustration. But at the same time, he couldn't deny the respect he had for Yu and the newfound admiration he had for Kay's coaching abilities. Despite the outcome of the fight, Josh left the ring promising to come back stronger and more determined than ever before. Josh is left utterly shocked as he finds himself unable to land even a single blow on Yu during their sparring match. He had put in so much effort and training leading up to this moment, and now he can't seem to connect with any of his punches. With each missed swing, he wonders what it was all for. As the first round of sparring comes to a close, K steps in and gives you the second rule of boxing, hitting. Josh begins to think that while Yu certainly has a lot of natural talent, his stamina levels might not be as high as his own. With renewed determination and a plan in mind, Josh prepares for the second round. But as soon as the bell rings, Yu immediately lands a punch to Josh's jaw, knocking him out cold. When he regains consciousness in the corner of the ring, a dejected Josh is forced to come to terms with the fact that he is simply not as skilled or talented as Yu. Just then, Yu approaches and asks if Josh is up for another round. Irritated by the inquiry, Josh frustratedly tells you to screw off and walks away. But before he goes, he turns to ask you one final question. 
Does he know someone who is stronger than him? Yu confirms that he does, and Josh asks if that person is actually stronger than him. Yu thinks for a moment, picturing a knee in his mind, and then replies that he probably is. Josh sadly acknowledges the response and bows his head, feeling crushed by his own inferiority in the face of true talent. As a boxing journalist, Peter Kent has always been interested in the sport, and its various champions. Recently, he has been thinking a lot about Kay's final boxer and believes that this year's lightweight boxing championship is going to be a complete mess. When his colleague asks him if he has any new scoop or information, Peter mentions that he has managed to get his hands on some information about Kay's new trainee, despite Kay's great efforts to keep everything under wraps. Peter wonders aloud what Kay was thinking, as he has been training this boxer for two years. Meanwhile, at the Lion Boxing Club, Kay's team is present as manager Carmen discusses Yu's debut opponent, John Taker, the rookie killer. Carmen describes John's impressive skills and achievements in the ring, and questions whether the two years of training that Yu has undergone will be enough to take on such a formidable opponent. Kay responds with a subdued attitude, acknowledging that it is a concern. Despite the uncertainty, Yu remains focused and determined, showing the fruits of his two years of physical training. He knows that he must be at the top of his game if he hopes to emerge victorious in the upcoming fight. Elsewhere, Peter has decided to visit John Taker's gym to interview him about the upcoming fight. As he sits down with John, he begins to ask him a series of questions about his training and strategies. John responds with provocative answers, clearly trying to psyche out his opponent. After the interview, John's trainer asks him how it went. John replies that he provoked them in moderation and then asks for some inspiration and whether he thinks he will beat his next opponent. His trainer tells him that he has proven his strength and that he should be confident in his abilities. John is uplifted by these words and feels motivated to give it his all in the ring. The day of Yu's debut fight against John Taker has finally arrived, and the tension in the air is palpable. As Yu makes his way to his dressing room, the paparazzi outside the arena are trying their best to get a glimpse of the two fighters and throw questions at Kay's camp. In the other dressing room, John takes note of the commotion outside and tries to focus on the task at hand. He knows that this match is attracting more attention than the main event, and he wants to make sure he is prepared. As the two boxers make their way to the ring, the commentators of the evening note that the fourth undercard lightweight match is garnering more attention than the main event. In the ring, John can't help but feel a sense of excitement as he thinks about the disappointed looks on the faces of the audience when he emerges victorious. Yu finally makes his appearance and steps into the ring, with Kay telling him to come up. The trainers give their final instructions to their fighters, and the two boxers face off in the ring. As the bell rings and the fight gets underway, John is ready to put his plan into action. But he is left stunned as he experiences Yu's sheer presence, which momentarily immobilizes him with a fear he has never felt before. After shaking off the initial shock, John moves to attack, but Yu shocks everyone with a ridiculously fast opening punch. The fight becomes a flurry of blows, with Yu delivering an onslaught of precise, grazing blows that leave John's head bloody. The referee stops the fight so that the ring doctor can check on John's condition. As the doctor examines the wounds, he is shocked by the precision and neatness of the injuries inflicted. A visibly stunned John stands in the ring, his heart racing with fear as he looks at the monster that is Yu. The audience watches in awe as Yu emerges victorious in his debut fight, leaving John battered and bruised. It is clear that Yu is a force to be reckoned with, and his future in the boxing world looks bright. The referee snaps John Taker back to reality and asks if he is still able to continue fighting. The ring doctor gives the all clear and the fight resumes. John is dazed and disoriented, but he knows he must keep going. He has trained too hard and come too far to give up now. As the bell rings, John takes a deep breath and tries to shake off the cobwebs. He looks across the ring and sees his opponent, Yu, standing tall and confident. John realizes that Yu is not like the boxers he has faced before. There is a fire in Yu's eyes and a ferocity in his punches that John has never encountered before. Yu's punches are not only skilled, but also full of violence and killing intent, reminding John of his youth when he was just starting out in the sport. John tries to get close to Yu, but the latter nonchalantly repels him with a flurry of jabs. Yu seems to be toying with John, casually dominating and completely overwhelming him. John's trainer watches from the corner, noting that Yu is deliberately dragging the fight out and wondering if this is how Kay wants the match to play out before being satisfied. As the audience goes wild at the devil that Kay has brought this time, much to Kay's visible delight, John realizes he has to do something to stand a chance. He remembers a move that his trainer had taught him, a risky but potentially game-changing technique called the headlock hook. John attempts to hinder Yu's movement by stamping on his feet, hoping to catch him off guard and set up the hook. However, Yu sees through the ploy and viciously strikes John in response. John grunts in pain as he endures the hits, but he does not give up. 
he knows that the headlock hook is his only chance at victory. As he waits for an opening, John's trainer realizes that Yu is in range of the hook and urges John to take the opportunity. It all comes down to this final moment, and John knows he has to give it his all. With a fierce determination, he launches the hook and hopes for the best. As we witness a flashback of John Taker's earlier days in the boxing world, we see him facing off against an opponent who seems to have the upper hand. Despite the odds stacked against him, John remembers the journey that brought him to this point, the grueling training sessions, the sacrifices he made, and the sheer determination that drives him to succeed. With these memories fueling him, John manages to push through the tough moments and ultimately emerge victorious in the fight by decision. Fast forward to the present day, and John finds himself in a similar situation. He is up against a skilled and formidable opponent, but he knows that he has what it takes to triumph. He draws upon the lessons he learned from his past experiences, trusting in his training and his own inner strength to carry him through. Despite the challenges he faces, John remains resolute and refuses to let anything stand in the way of his victory. As the sound of his trainer's shouts filled his ears, John Taker summoned the last of his strength and launched a fierce counter-attack against his opponent, Yu. Despite his best efforts, however, he was still unable to land a single hit on the elusive fighter. Frustrated and running out of options, John grabbed hold of Yu in a desperate clinch, hoping to land a clean punch and turn the tide of the fight. But Yu was too quick and skilled for John, easily dodging his punch and counterattacking with a powerful blow that broke John's fist. John cried out in pain as he stumbled backwards, struggling to stay on his feet. Sensing an opportunity, Yu pounced on John with a flurry of punches, knocking him to the canvas with a solid hit. Lying face down on the ground, John fought to get back up, his determination and will to win driving him on. But the damage he had sustained was too great, and despite his valiant efforts, he was unable to rise from his knees. As Yu stood victorious over him, John knew that he had given it his all, but it just wasn't enough to overcome his opponent's superior strength and technique. And that's how the first part of this manual ends. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word boxer. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.